please give a traditional grizzly welcome to our dear friend and Georgia Gwinnett College supporter, United States Representative Rob Woodall. I wasn't nervous, uh, Stosh, until it was the grizzly welcome that I was going to get, and I started to get a little, uh, get a little rattled. I, I've never spoken to a college uh, graduation before. I've done high school graduations, and high school is different because, uh, for those of you who, uh, who remember it as I do, uh, I was as smart as I ever was on that day uh, at 18, right? I knew it all. It was, it was all going to be, uh, all going to be a gravy from there. You all have a little different, uh, different perspective on the world. If I could just uh, ask, because I think we're in the circle of trust uh, here. Uh, together. Uh, who's the youngest uh, person graduating today? Anybody 21 and graduating uh, today? Anybody 20 and graduating today? You, oh man. Oh man, Whitney. It, can I go the other direction? Is that okay in the circle of trust? Um, anybody in their 40s and graduating uh, uh, today? All right, all right. We're, 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 not, we're not done with the circle of trust yet. Uh, anybody in their 50s and graduating today? All right, all right. No. I, I'm going to have to ask. Anybody going to confess to being in their 60s and graduating today? Sold to the gentleman in the 50s, right back, uh, right back here. The, your president talks about my commitment to GGC. I, I got to tell you, I'm in, I'm in politics, what's so not that complicated. Uh, you guys are rock stars, right? Just rock stars. Uh, it's been 100 years since we tried to start up a, a four-year uh, uh, university, and you didn't, just, uh, you didn't just come. We didn't build it and folks came. Uh, we built the building, and you built the tradition. Again, in that circle of trust, who only showed up here for a, a semester or two, a year or two, and you were going to transfer out somewhere else uh, uh, pretty quickly? Confess to me. Who, who, was on, who, who, who This is a part-time episode for who? Uh-huh. But it gets, it hook, it gets its uh, hooks in you. You see the opportunity uh, here. And everybody in the community is not only invested in your success, but proud of that success. How many of you are going to stay here in the community uh, when you're done now? I got, I'm going to ask the other question. Who's going to tell me, look me in the eye? Because uh, they say that in politics. The only people I believe are the ones who look me in the eye and say, Rob, I'm going to vote against you. Right? That's a vote you can count on. That's absolutely going to, that's absolutely going to happen. Uh, who's going to look us in the eye and tell us they're going to take their big brain and they're going to leave the great state of Georgia and go practice their craft elsewhere? Who's, who's committed to leaving us? Miss, leaving us? Leaving us? Leaving us? The, uh, we've still got some time to work on you folks. I, 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 I want to I I do some of that. I want to talk about the American dream. The American dream. Uh, Stosh talks about uh, uh, GGC being the, uh, the most diverse institution in the in, in entire South, uh, uh, southern United States. Uh, I don't think that uh, uh, speaks at all to, to, uh, to a diversity of the American dream. Now, when I was coming along, the American dream was owning your own home. Uh, I will ask the folks who are supporting you in the crowd here today, I'm told now the American dream is getting your adult children out of your home. Is there any, is there any, truth, to, is there any truth to that? Is that I, I've heard that that's where we, that that's where we are. But, but I, I see nothing but opportunity. I, is somebody going to confess to being a little frightened about, uh, about their future as they sit here today? Anybody going to confess to having some, uh, having some, some reservations about where we're headed? You, you just, that was a sympathy confession, sir, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that. I have nothing but optimism about the future, but it doesn't happen. It's not a Washington, D.C. optimism. It's a, it's a Lawrenceville. It's a Gwinnett County. Uh, it's, a, it's a community uh, optimism because... The, the best that we have to celebrate as an American tradition uh, comes from here. I, I, I talked to so many folks about what they want to do with their lives. In the second grade class I spoke to this morning, there were at least nine people who thought the President of the United States was where their career path was going to, to end one day, and I, I hope that they're right. Uh, we need good people to, uh, to pursue that, uh, that path. Uh, a couple wanted to have a career playing video games. Uh, and uh, believe that was going to work out. Is anybody, as you sit here today, absolutely certain that for your American dream, you're going to be fabulously, fabulously wealthy? I mean, Bill Gates style, fabulous wealth. Mark Zuckerberg, fabulous wealth. Going to have some folks up. I want to get with uh, 
uh, Mr. Hughes and the foundation and come and visit with you all before you get out of here uh, today, those of you who are going to have fabulous, uh, going to have fabulous wealth. I wish that upon you. I wish that upon you if, you if you're after it. I happen to look at people on either sides of the aisle here who have committed themselves to never having fabulous uh, wealth. And I'm grateful. Uh, I'm grateful to them for doing that. Can I ask you that? Is it, you're, you're, you're picking up your, your parchment this afternoon. Any of you absolutely certain you're going to have a life that's, that's, that's full of poverty but, but rich with, with happiness? Do you, do you know that, that, uh, that, that, that financial remuneration isn't going to be in the, in the cards for you? You're choosing, a, you're choosing a different path. When they put together the, uh, the, our, our founding documents, you've heard the story. It's, it's, it's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but it was life, liberty, and the pursuit of property. That was the tale. And folks knew that we weren't going to find happiness with stuff, that the American dream wasn't going to be about stuff. If that happens to, to be a way that, that you can provide, that you can, can contribute, that you can, can grow the economy, more power to you. But as a people, that's not where we began and it's not where we are today. As a, on a per-employee basis, the patents that grow this country, the innovation that grows this, this country, uh, uh, 16-fold more patents go to individuals uh, than go to larger corporations. Right? The, the, the innovation, the productivity gains come from, a, uh, come from the ground up. Two-thirds of the jobs created in this country come from the, the ground up. Who is committed as you sit here today not to go to work for the man, but to hang out your own shingle and do your own thing and live life on your terms? Who's committed to that? Committed to that. That, that, that is where the innovation happens in, in America. I, I, more power to you if you want to go to, to Coca-Cola. My dad worked for the power company his, uh, his entire uh, life. We've got lots of great corporate citizens here. But the magic that happens, the magic in the American dream that happens is that magic that comes from folks who take on the risks that other folks aren't willing to take. I've got to believe investing your time and your energy in what was once an unproven university. What was an unproven university, and you came and proved it. What was once a, an experiment that we were conducting here, you, you came and made it, a, uh, made it a, a reality. I worry that we're training risk-taking out of America. I worry that failure is somehow a, 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 a bad word. I think I've learned more from my failures than I, than I have from my successes, and I suspect you have been, you have been the same way. It's the dream that separates us from so many other folks. Can I ask who comes from a family where you or your parents are, are first generation uh, in, this, uh, in this country? Folks who, uh, who didn't, uh, who didn't uh, have the, the, the privilege of, of knowing nothing but the, the American dream. I, I have two kinds of people in my office talking about how to make your life better. Uh, just so you know, Washington, D.C., full of really smart people who care a lot about you. If you're just willing to live your life the way we tell you to, there is happiness in the offering. Just want you to know that now. Happiness in the offering. But occasionally, folks like to live life on their own, their own terms. I have two kinds of people in my office. I have folks in my office who come and complain about the way everybody else is living their life. And I have folks in my office who came here from somewhere that freedom did not live, where opportunity did not live, where a chance to make your tomorrow better than your today was not available. And those folks love freedom and the American dream in ways that I can never understand. If you, thinking about those folks who stood up uh, uh, that we applauded for your service in the military, if you've not put on the uniform to defend freedom, or if you haven't escaped somewhere where you didn't have freedom, freedom becomes just a word. If, if opportunity is, is, is what, you've, if, it's what you've, you've known, opportunity becomes uh, just a word. Dreaming becomes those things that, that you do to pass the time, not those things you do to set a goal. How many of you never believed you'd find the day that you were sitting to receive your graduation certificate today? Never believed it. Now, sir, you didn't believe it because you, you weren't committed to it, were you? You, were, you doubted some of your commitment along the way. Who didn't believe it because they didn't think that that was in the cards for them? They weren't entitled uh, to that. They weren't going to be able to make that happen. Sir, I'm going to tear up just looking at you down there. I am. How many of you could have done it alone? How many of you were strong enough, smart enough to do it alone? 
when I think about the American dream, I'm not thinking about Mark Zuckerberg. I'm not even thinking about uh, Rob's automotive repair, though I would tell you that I can fix your car better than most folks, uh, better than most folks can. I'm thinking about the way that we rely on each other and how we're stronger together than we are individually. Who's the first in their family to pick up one of these diplomas this afternoon? Anybody the first? Wow. 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 They are probably also deserving of a round of applause. Anyone the last in their family to pick up one of these? The bills are done being paid, everybody? Okay, good, good. This thing we have called America, you know, I carry the rule book in my pocket, I've got the, the Constitution. It's not something that, that governs itself, it's something that, that, uh, that, that we have to renew each and every day. There is so much pessimism that I bump into every day. There's so much cynicism that I bump into every day. There's so much, the odds are stacked against me, Rob, and I can never make it happen that I run into every day. And then Stash calls me and says, will you come speak to people who make it happen for themselves every day because they're surrounded with a support network that won't allow them to fail. Folks are counting on you. I'm closer to death than I am to birth. I'm gonna get out of here okay. I don't want you to worry about me. But I'm counting on your success. Pay those Social Security checks uh, coming along the way. There may be some other folks here in the crowd who are counting on you uh, along, the, uh, along the way. Your success is not guaranteed. But your commitment guarantees our success as a people. I look at the folks who have decided to invest their lives in making you and me better. Folks who have decided to invest their lives so that we can have the freedom to invest our lives however it is that we choose. Folks who have made their life's work enabling us to do things that we never could have done otherwise. I call that service. I call that, uh, I call that the, 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 the highest and, and greatest calling and when it's in colorful robes it looks even, uh, uh, even prouder and more distinguished than I have, uh, uh, than I have imagined. We don't do any of this, uh, we don't do any of this uh, alone. I wish upon you uh, the American dream that you choose for yourself. I will quote the great poet Eminem. If you had just one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you want in just one moment, would you grab it or would you let it slip? You never know when opportunity is going to come knocking on your door. You never know when you're going to have the chance to fulfill your dreams. You never know when you're going to have a friend who is down and who is out and you can make the difference in their lives. These folks who sit to your left and your right will never know if they were the one who touched you and changed your life forever. But we have that opportunity each and every day. Leadership, scholarship, service, and creativity. They, I wish each and every one of those upon you in abundance. And if I find myself on the uh, stage looking for a great poet uh, 20 years from now, uh, I hope that I'm quoting some of your successes uh, that have happened along the way. Congratulations for what you have accomplished. And I, my greatest uh, wish that you accomplish uh, everything that you dream in the future. Thank you for letting me be here with you today. I appreciate that.